Hey everyone, it's Stephanie and you are tuned in to Love at First Flight Season 1, The Review. So, if you haven't watched them, I have done the review for Married uh, at First Sight Season 6. Now I'm getting these confused. I've been doing the reviews for Married at First Sight Season 6 and a lot of you have asked if I was going to do the reviews for Love at First Flight. So I was trying to get a feel for it and kind of figure it out and I'm going to start doing the reviews now. So if you haven't seen them, take a look at the Married at First sight videos and chime in let me know what you think of the show what you thought of the season and then now you can start chiming in on love at first flight so the premise of this show is that you get to know each other as you travel together which is very true you definitely get to see a different side of someone when you're traveling with them because you you know you kind of don't really escape sometimes traveling kind of offers different challenges and you know we don't get to be our best selves all the time and so it is really good indicator to watch people travel together and figure things out go over challenges and see how they come out on the other side so I do like the premise of this show um, so we have eight people who were matched and they were matched based on this professional matchmaker and these assessments. We don't know what these assessments are um, and I'm a little thrown off by that because I would like to know like what the basis was. I mean I have an idea of what kind of questions were asked um, but there's like no awareness of how these people were matched, what the assessment was or just what was some of the foundational things. I think with some other shows like Married at First Sight we get to kind of see the process of the interview, we get to see some of the experts, um, we, you know, I went online and I just looked at the questionnaire for the casting for Married at First Sight. So you, I've seen a lot of the questions and I know a lot of the questions that I would just ask as a professional, but I would really like to get the assessment of how these couples are put together, type of, what type of measuring. I know most people probably don't care, but that's the therapist in me. Um, so that's the little thing. We're kind of left in the dark with how these people just ended up together. It pretty much kicks off with the idea of these couples meeting for the first time and everybody gets the text message letting them know where they need to be and that they're going to be traveling for the next 30 days together. So we have four couples. Uh, it's Alma and Michael, Stephanie and Michael, Stephanie and Ryan. So we have a, a couple of double names here and we have Jenna and Kale. So I will kick it off with Stephanie and Michael. Stephanie and Michael kind of meet in the park. He has like a, a goat that he's taken care of. So each, each week, I guess, or each episode has a theme. Basically, they're given tasks to accomplish together in every city that they go to. And the benefit is that they get to stay in a luxurious hotel. And if they don't complete the task, they get to stay in, you know, or they not get to, but they end up staying in a place that isn't as favorable. So the goal is to like accomplish the task by any means necessary. What I like about that is that you get to kind of see how people work together, how they overcome challenges, um, how they do with things that they really don't like because that's very telling of how you're going to do because marriage is part of that. There's things that you don't like and you have to deal with it. And so these tasks are indica in indicative of, okay, how's this person going to be in a situation that they don't like? What I don't care for <laughs> what I don't care for with these tasks is some of them just seem kind of gimmicky some of them just seem like just a little ridiculous you know Michael is in the park with the goat and that's how Stephanie meets him and eventually they transit you know they have to kind of walk this goat throughout the city and then they transition to this place where they go to a farm and they have to kind of clean up the goat area and eventually they take care of the goats etc why this worked was because taking care of the goat represented something outside of themselves and so obviously we first think oh children you know how's this person going to deal with taking care of something outside of themselves that requires more attention than an adult and you want to make sure it's safe and so now we're looking at oh okay is this person a compassionate person is this person considerate is this person you know thinking on their feet you know at one point they like stop and get the go to diaper the baby go to diaper and it's and they both help it get in there and then you see them kind of move on to where they get to the goat farm and you see compassionate sides of them taking care of this whole thing so i that's 
probably the only thing that I enjoyed about that activity because <laughs> I know that on the first date first meeting someone and we're about to travel for 30 days you know I wouldn't want to be in stilettos in a goat farm and I don't think he was really feeling it at all as well but it worked out you know it was a cute little activity for you know if we're looking at the silver lining here they both are entrepreneurs they both uh, are very faith-based I think Stephanie if we look at this episode initially comes out the gate saying like Jesus is her homeboy and she's very very uh, driven with her relationship with God and it's important that someone is at the very same level I think it's important that you know you have someone who has the same faith or similar faiths just because that could be problematic in the future where I would advise her to um, grow is allowing someone you know and we don't know how to develop in the future but allowing someone to kind of share their faith with you and share where they are we can't really do you know design where okay this person is at a level seven in their faith and and they need to be at a 10 because I'm at a 10 you never really know where that is so I would like to see her be a little more malleable in being open to whatever it is that he brings especially since he's faith based as well and kind of not being judgy throughout the episode you can see that Stephanie is very dominant <laughs> she is very much a control freak I can just pick up pieces of that um, and she likes to test him you'll see that she kind of towards the end when they're talking about communication um, she says that she doesn't communicate well in relationships and I appreciate that she just came out and say that is that a red flag yeah it is but at least you know it the bigger red flag would to think that would be to think that you can communicate well and you can't so she kind of says that and she says she you know she kind of drops hints so uh, I, you know what I think pause I think what this show is missing is like you know little intercepts of an expert or someone who can help guide them um, so what I would like to see and I don't know if it's gonna come up but what I would like to see is that you know maybe a therapist or relationship expert or a life coach or someone is in each city going with them to to mediate because this this episode was a little confusing for me as to kind of like what is going on here you know I had to watch it twice to just kind of figure out you know where's the gimmick where's the reality and kind of how does it work together and that's why it took me long to like get into these reviews because I'm like how is this gonna work and so if it continues on with no expert then I'm pretty much going to offer that to you all as to what I would tell them in each city and so on and so forth um, so Stephanie needs to not maybe not drop hints or learn not to drop hints and to be more direct because Michael conversely says you know I like to just be more direct because you know most things can be fixed but you have to address it and you kind of have to be a grown-up about it I like their dynamic together they have a good time together it seems like they're very easygoing um, because Stephanie is somewhat of a control freak but she expects a man to be a man you can kind of pick that up off bat she started kind of saying hey do you want me to drive to the city or and he says no and he basically says you know and I don't think it was chauvinistic I mean I know it may have come off that way but I really think he just in his mind was like no I'm gonna drive like I expected to drive and so she's kind of pushing him and saying why did you expect to drive you know and here's the gotcha even though she's pushing him because she wants to see if he's somewhat of a chauvinist whether she realizes it or not there's a part of her that respects the fact that he really challenged her and said no I'm driving like regardless I think that in the long run if he would have let her kind of bulldoze him and say oh okay you can drive if you want to that wouldn't have worked for her and she would have remembered that because throughout this first episode she's saying I'm looking to see if you know Michael's marriage material and that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot for day one and day two um, but she's like in the game they're both here for a reason and so she's looking so I'm glad that he pretty much has a backbone and is not kind of moved by what might be a tough exterior even though she's fun and she's friendly and she jokes but you can tell she's kind of no nonsense so so far so good for them um moving on to Alma and Michael so Alma and Michael meet in the park they kind of talk about their backgrounds they discuss the importance of family uh, she is the oldest of three I believe he's the youngest of five so I expect to see them have some areas where you can kind of see those birth order 
things come out. You can see I'm the oldest of three. So you can see that she's probably going to be, I'm guessing she's probably going to be a little more of the go-getter. She'll probably be a little more of the one who's assertive where I assume the youngest of five is going to be somewhat coddled, um, somewhat uncomfortable with being uncomfortable because usually what do we do with the baby in the family? We, we don't want them to be uncomfortable. So we set parameters that make them comfortable and what we have to realize is even as people, we tend to kind of grow into what we have been doing. So for example, I'm one of three, you know, when we were younger, we thought our dynamic would change so much like, yeah, when we're grown ups, you know, we'll do this. And the reality is our dynamic hasn't changed that much with each other. It's funny, we're all adults, but we kind of still, you know, act in the same role. I tend to be more of the assertive one. You know, my sister's, you know, typical middle sister. She's very um, responsible and she has a lot of stuff going on. She's married with children, but you know, when we're all together, the, the middle sister comes out and my brother is the typical boy and he is the typical young child and he's not had to kind of had to do certain things that we've had to do and so on and so forth. So those things matter and they matter in relationships. So what I expect to see from Alma and Michael is that those birth orders are going to show themselves in the way that they approach things. Their activity is to complete some graffiti art. Um, she is all about it. I think he is having a good time. She seems a little more comfortable. She seems even a little more assertive in that activity as well. You hear that he says, you know, my walls are up and I'm going to keep them up until I get comfortable. They talk about a little bit of their backgrounds. Uh, you know, his family, his parents were separated. Uh, her parents are divorced. They both kind of say the same thing, which is interesting to me. She says, you know, that she's scared of divorce and her thing is like, okay, well, I can't get divorced if I don't get married. And he's saying, you know, my family, uh, my parents were separated, so I want to make sure that I do this the right way. So the problem here is that they're operating from fear. And so what they fear the most, if they don't get a hold of it, will come to fruition because they're attracting it. And we'll start to stumble over things that we put in our own way. So I'm looking for why this isn't gonna work out so that I can not get consumed and not get hurt. So it's really important for them to kind of be aware of that. You know, Michael says that his walls are up. If I could whisper in his ear, I would say, I totally get it because we respond based on our past experiences. But the reality is you're here for a reason. And so the walls have to come down. You know, we can't hold on to, okay, these are, this is why I am the way that I am, but I'm going to do this major thing that requires me to really be so different. So that's what I would say to him. Alma has like a breakdown where she literally wants to flee. Um, she says that she doesn't know if this is the guy for her the first night and she literally wants to run away. The next morning she has like a moment where she gets back and she realizes, and I'm so happy to see her kind of process this. Um, that would have been a great time for somebody to kind of jump in or be next door where she can, you know, say, hey, I really need to talk to someone because she recognizes that, you know, Michael isn't her norm and where are the butterflies and where's the immediate chemistry? You guys, sometimes the butterflies and the immediate chemistry is a distraction to the fact that this is not a good relationship or it's not a good person for you. We get caught up in the feelings, we get caught up in the lust and there's no love there or this person is not necessarily a compatible person for you but we're caught up in the pink cloud of it all. So I'm glad that she was able to bring herself back down and say, hey, you know, this might be the best guy for me or essentially all these other jokers that I've paid attention to haven't served me well so let me do something different let me stay in what's uncomfortable for me right now and just start to build a friendship and see where it goes so I love seeing that I'm glad she was able to do that by themselves by herself and kind of see how it goes moving forward so that's Alma and Michael let's see Stephanie and Ryan they meet on a pier. Um, they both are pretty young. I think Stephanie's about 29, Ryan's about 26. They have an instant chemistry that you can see. They're both very physically attracted to each other. Nothing has really happened this episode, but you can kind of see it. He thinks she's beautiful. He thinks, you know, she thinks he's handsome and they kind of have this little picture perfect type of setup. Um, they immediately start sharing about themselves throughout the episode. You can see that they're very comfortable. Ryan has a heart condition that he basically and it's a very um serious one that he shares with her why i like that he did that is for two reasons one it's a big 
big aspect of who he is. That's not something that you want to hide. And, and that's something that we would mostly hide for a little while until it felt right or until we felt we can trust that person. Two, you know, having a health condition that could be problematic at any point, you just wouldn't want to hide that because you would want somebody to know so that they can look out for it. So it's beyond just, okay, I'm going to share when I want to. This is something that we should share immediately. So you kind of know, hey, we're traveling together for 30 days. So this is when the reality of this whole setup comes into play. Well, if we're traveling together for 30 days, you need to know this about me because it's not just about TV. Like we're doing this in real life and there's things that people need to know. So God forbid something happens, you know. But what I enjoyed about seeing that was he just kind of said it. He let her know he was comfortable and he's fully immersed into the whole thing. It isn't, um, it isn't hard to watch them together. She talks about how she... Um, you know, was in a seven year relationship and he wasn't faithful and it really stunted her and she's willing to put herself out there in a way that she hasn't before. So it's good to see them kind of jump in. You know, they do an activity with, uh, you know, the boat and getting in the water and then they do a um, helicopter ride around Niagara Falls. What was good to see about that was she's terrified of heights, she's terrified of flying and she allowed him to kind of be her anchor in that whole thing. And I mean, hello, it's all at first flight. So you have to be comfortable with traveling. And it's good that she's putting herself out there. You can see she's uncomfortable. Um, but it doesn't really matter. She's willing to do whatever it takes. And they seem to have a pretty good setup. They kind of talk about backgrounds. And you see that they're kind of coasting along. So I would probably say, although the majority of the couples were pre pretty smooth this episode, I would say they have um, an instant type of connection that I picked up on. So the last couple is Jenna and Kale. So Jenna is a school teacher and Kale is an attorney and they meet in the middle of New York. This couple, <laughs> this if you've watched it, you already know where I'm gonna go. This couple is an interesting couple and that is kind of what makes me want to say, you know, like what was the setup with this matching thing? Like why were they matched? Um, because they're polar opposites and I do think opposites attract but then I also think that it gets to be too opposite to where it could be po problematic um, Jenna is a ball buster she is uh, she's a firecracker um, she kind of is a blaze of energy and she's very sarcastic and Kale is not Kale is timid he's a little buttoned up you know he is uh, very thoughtful and and how he comes across and he is not he seems a little uncomfortable just even with himself but he probably is the type of guy that when he gets very comfortable he lets loose and you know has a lot of fun but initially he's just kind of eager to meet someone eager to get started you know Jenna they talk about their backgrounds of course Kale was in an unhealthy relationship that went back and forth and back and forth and finally he was able to get out of it and be open to more um, and be willing to to be in this experiment and Jenna she says something which was kind of weird to me she said she was like in a relationship with the or having feelings for a person who was married and it didn't work out I'm glad it didn't work out because he was married so I don't I don't even get that but um, <laughs> she said it didn't work out and then she said it probably wouldn't have worked out anyway so straight off the bat your picker is off as far as I'm concerned you know like he wasn't available to begin with so try not to be too judgy but like based off this one episode like that's all that I can get from it he wasn't available to begin with so no wonder it didn't work out so that lets me know that somewhere in your past is like there's there's a disconnect with what is even accessible to you more or less is a compatible for you um, so they kind of get together I think between Stephanie and Michael who had the whole goat thing and them uh, I think they probably tie for like the worst first date activity because they have to do a food tour around New York which sounds exciting except it's like not the normal food tour it's just random things that like you would never really ever try or want to try and they're they have to try it in order to you know stay in the nicer hotel so Kale takes one for the team you can already see that this guy is like the agreeable guy and not to say he's perfect you know it's one episode and we don't really know him but out of the two of them she's kind of like no I don't do this I don't read maps I don't you know I don't read maps either but I'll fake it because I did that with my husband before we went on a trip like 
way before we were married and I was like I don't I you know this looks like scribble to me like I can't read it but I faked it because you know that's what you <laughs> that's what you do first when you're first starting out you fake like oh yeah I see it like I didn't see anything but she's not even pretending she's like I don't read it this is up to you and I think because he has not gotten to know her yet and really she hasn't presented herself in a way to get to know him um it's very off-putting and he says that so I'm like oh my god a few hours in on this restaurant tour and he says she's off-putting and she is off-putting she's very sarcastic she's very guarded it's not hard to see and I'm really trying not to be really hard on her but it's not it's really not hard to see why she's difficult why she's single because if she shows up in this way it's very off-putting I'm very sarcastic too but I kind of use that with my friends and with people who know me and like as you get to know me you get pieces of it so you're like oh that's funny stuff's crazy but you don't really get that first off because if people don't know you they haven't built a relationship with you it is off-putting um, so he gets that constantly and you can see him he's like the typical eager beaver like he's ready to do this he takes one for the team and looks at the map he's eating all the stuff that she would never eat she's she's a vegetarian I think or a vegan but I feel like even if she wasn't she just just would not do this she's just like this is what it is and I'm not gonna do it so it's you know it's a little bothersome to me because I'm like hmm why did you do this experiment <laughs> people don't do these experiments don't sign up because they're doing married at first sight in Philly right now um, they're casting for D Dallas you know don't do this if you're not really gonna do it like I would never I mean I'm married but if I wasn't I would not be able to do any of these shows because I know myself I want to see people on here who want to be on here who who will really take advantage of the opportunity and it's okay if you're not that risk taker um, but don't sign up for this show and then be with someone who's really giving a hundred percent and you're not because it's not fair to them um, so he basically takes one for the team and everywhere they go it kind of gets worse it kind of gets worse and you can tell that he's really annoyed and she's not getting any more pleasant <laughs> and she finally says you know I think that he's holding something in and this is kind of weird and even her approach and him saying that it's kind of like it's not really it doesn't have to be warm and fuzzy but it does have to be inviting like I would have said hey you know are you okay you just seem a little quiet like is there something you want to say she's basically saying there's something you're not telling me and I feel like it is but I don't know what it is and because her approach is her approach anyways even even if he should be saying something is bothering him he's not going to clearly he's not the person who's gonna do that but you're also not baiting him in a way that would make him feel comfortable where I want to see Kale kind of grow up throughout this process is um, being a little more assertive with his feelings I mean you're a lawyer and a litigator so I, I know you got it in you but he has to just say listen you know you're kind of like I don't know if you're sarcastic I don't know if you're always like this or you know do you like me or is do you not like me is there a problem because you just come off with these sharp things that come off like not so nice I mean just get it out of the way because the uncomfortable I don't you know I don't I don't know what you're talking about I don't have what you know it's kind of just like it's like we're all uncomfortable watching this at this point so I know you guys are uncomfortable and you here you are about to take a trip with somebody for 30 days I mean an hour is a long time with the wrong person <laughs> so for 30 days I don't know how it's gonna look but it was like really it was like when you go to dinner with a couple or you're around a couple and they start arguing and you're just trying to like you know back up into the bushes until you're no longer there like how do I get out of here and that's how I felt watching it like this is really uncomfortable so I really hope that they turn a corner um, I don't want to judge too quickly I don't feel like that corner is nearby <laughs> for the next episode but I hope that throughout this experiment they turn the corner so I think that's it I think that's it for season I mean not season one but episode one um, it's an interesting show you know I, I'm kind of I'm wishing they had like just a checkpoint at every you know uh, city just to have somebody to kind of say hey you know you're going down the wrong path or hey let's talk about this because they're really like every every man for themselves or every couple for themselves and they're fending fending for themselves and although they might be the right match obviously there are reasons why they chose this experiment and felt that it would be beneficial and felt that they needed it so I feel like they need like some sort of accountability some sort of coaching um, but I'll do my best here so I hope you enjoyed it uh, if you enjoyed it subscribe and comment and I'll see you on the next review have a great day